these are my three Renergy panels, but they're slightly different. I'm going to try and connect them in series. I have a couple questions. What up, folks? This is I from Bascot Solar, <laughs> where I like to keep solar simple. <laughs> it's getting more complicated these days, but it's still easy. Today, I want to test putting mis mix matched or mismatched <laughs> panels in series. They're both by Renergy. There's a Renergy, um, let me just show you. I have two normal Renergy 100 watt panels, and then I have the Renergy Eclipse. Let's talk about the voltages for a second. The two Renergy normal panels are about 21.6 volts, and then the other one is like 21 point some odd volts, but it has higher amps. This one, the Renergy normal ones are uh, 5.72, and the Renergy Eclipse is 6.10 amps. Now, you know when you connect stuff in series, it adds the voltages together. The voltages are pretty much um, close to each other. That shouldn't be a problem. But then the um, amps stay the same. Now, here's the thing that's going to be interesting. Wait, there's a second question. The second question is, I have this EB120 that's capable of doing 65 volts, I believe. <sighs> but I think it's 68 volts for real, for real. So 21, 40 to 63 volts. I should be right at the threshold to get these three panels in series. So I'm gonna be using my voltmeter today to, to measure uh, open circuit voltage. I may mess around with parallel cables to measure the actual voltage on the low. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. That's something that Jason Noy mentioned. That's a good little tip I got from him. So I'm going to do that as well. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it for y'all. So it's important to know that voltage for the most part does not fluctuate. It is impacted by your wire length, I believe. I don't think it's impacted by your wire gauge. I think it's just the length that impacts that. I think the wire gauge impacts your amps. I don't know. But uh, they typically, no matter what amount of sun is on these devices, these panels, they'll typically read the amount of voltage that they're going to push through. It's also important to know that voltage open circuit is what you get when there's no load on it. And voltage, whatever, max load, whatever it is, is what you get when it's under load. The MPPT can also impact what kind of voltage you're getting off of the panels, but I think that's inside the device. I don't know. I don't know if it runs throughout the whole length of the cable or if it gets to the device and then the MPPT drops the voltage down. Just some things to consider. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to measure the voltage off of these two Renergy panels um, and just kind of baseline and see what we're working with. I'm going to unplug this. I don't always do this before I disconnect solar panels because of the lower voltage of most of my arrays, but it's a good practice to unplug before you start messing around with solar cables and disconnecting stuff, just FYI. So here is what you have. The parallel cable is meant to have two different strings of solar coming in, but I have no other string connected. This is coming from my set of panels in series, and it's gonna be connected to this MC4 to eight millimeter cable right there. And then those two leads are open for me to stick my probes in. We got our Klein tools. We're gonna to set it to volts and then switch it over to DC instead of AC. I don't really need to reset it. I'm seeing about 35 volts and that is connected to the device. So I'm gonna disconnect the device, just unplugging it at the barrel and then see what kind of, it kind of went down to 33, 34 and see if that changes. All right, it's unplugged. So it should be open circuit now and it's showing 43.2. So yeah, it dropped down a whole 10 volts, which is interesting when you consider the um, Ace Volt and Alcatel video I did, where I was getting a lot of voltage drop on that. So if you think about the fact that I wanna add this Renergy Eclipse joint, open circuit voltage is 43. So the adding that to it will probably take it up to about 66. Let's see. The panels are connected. I'll show you in a second, but um, I did a video on how to connect panels in parallel and series. You could check that out right up here. All three of those 100 watt panels in series. Now, I left the probes in. <laughs> so look at what the reading says. It says 59 volts. 
So that's pretty cool. The little joint works. It is not connected to. I'm just going to show you what's going on here. You can see that this says, can you see that? 16 volts to 60 volts. So that's right. And that's open circuit right there. So this should work perfectly. So since it's plugged in, getting 60 volts, I should have no problems. I think the real number on this is 65 or 68. But let's see if it blows it up. Not getting any input. Sun just came out. Okay, now it's doing something. 30, 40, 54, 70, 1, 123, 129. This is what the conditions are looking like. Sun is trying to come out. The voltage on that hasn't changed at all. It's still about 60 volts coming in. So to be honest, I was shocked to see that the volts stayed at 60. I don't know why they did. Oh snap, the fan just turned on. So I think the clouds just went over. Let's go back to volts. 49.8. But now they're at 49. That makes more sense to me, especially based on the last test that we did, which was just with the two energy panels in series. They went from, what, 43 to 34. Let me show you what the solar conditions are like. It's yeah, super bright, but there's clouds over it. Let's see what kind of amps we're getting. I'm gonna take my clamp meter. It's already zeroed. We're just gonna pop it on this line right here. There you go. So you can see that it's getting about five amps. Those two um, joints are 5.72. The amps fluctuate with the sun. So five amps, I'm happy with that. I can live with that. Even though that panel on the end is a six amp panel, I don't care. I'll lose an amp to have all of these in series. Let's see how much power we're getting here. 259 watts out of a 300 watt array. That's a good day. <laughs> That's a really good day. I'm still not the biggest fan of putting panels in series. I'd rather have a single panel do what it's supposed to do. So in this situation, I'd much rather have a 300 watt panel right here. But I have given into the series hustle because one, I have power stations that can take the power now. I didn't always have power stations that could take the power. My EB120 was the only one that could get that high. And now I have the Ace Fold and the Alcatel. I don't know if this situation is going to work out as far as wires, but this allows me to get more power into this EB120. And then I could charge devices uh, better from this one. And I could run my fridge and my deep freezer more uh, effectively from this one and charge some devices. And it also cuts down on another wire that I have going in here, which is what I've been able to do by putting these panels in series. My wires are getting slimmer. So one of these wires is essentially going to go away. If this went over your head, you should definitely check out my video on how to connect panels in series in parallel. And you should also check out me trying to figure out how to get this Alcatel to 500 watts because that was a good exercise in testing. Oh.